Welcome everybody to Iconic TV Live. It's Tuesday, it's five o'clock. And I wanna ask you, do you remember the first time that you decided, I'm gonna start this business? And do you remember who your first client was? Just that first dollar amount that you got, even if it was really small, maybe it was just a hundred dollars. And do you remember the time where you were just exhausted? You couldn't go on anymore. You thought, this is too hard. I don't want to do this anymore. I quit. And then right at the moment where you're about to throw in the towel and everything was done, something happened and you, wow, wow, I can do this. This is going to work. Those are all our stories. And today, that is what we're talking about here on Iconic TV Live, is how do you talk about the stories that are going to make you money? So if you are a coach or consultant, an expert in your area, this is a class you want to listen to because we're going to show you that there's a difference between the things that make you money and the things that make you broke. Okay. Because we want you to stand out. We want you to be iconic. We want you to make a difference in the world with whatever your product and your program is, right? There's a reason you started your business and you want to make sure that you do it to the best of your ability. So today, We've got treats, we've got gifts, and we've got some really great strategies that you're going to learn. So um, I want to know who you are, what is your story, where are you coming in from, how'd you hear about us, how long have you been with us, tell me a little bit about you, put it in the comments down below, and if you are not familiar with me, my name is Dr. Connie Scavella, I am the founder of the Iconic Entrepreneur Group and Movement, and I'm also a two-time number one best-selling author, an international speaker, and a business growth strategist. All of that mouthful means that I'm focused on one thing, and that is helping you hit your goal, taking you from six figures to seven figures in one year or less without all the crazy stress and struggle and overwhelm that is seeming to happen to most people, right? So if you are ready for that, if you would like a simple way to catapult your business without having to spend a whole bunch of money on ads and copywriting and all that kind of stuff, we're going to show you through the power of story. And I know you've heard it. People are making millions and millions of dollars just being story coaches, telling you stories, having you uh, learn how to tell stories so that people will listen to your story. So what we're going to talk about today is the seven types of stories you do need to have. And how do you say them? What order do you put them in? When do you use them? When do you not use them? And in fact, we're not only just going to talk about the stories that are going to make you money, we'll tell you the three types of stories that will also well, they'll kill your deal. You don't want to tell these kind of stories. All right. Um, I'm curious where you guys are coming in from. If this is your first time, please put a number one in the comments down below. And we have a gift for you guys. So I will uh, show you a whole bunch of gifts that we have for you guys for being live. If you haven't um, been here before, if you missed something before, we can always get you the replay. Now, we are just coming live off the back of a really, really powerful and successful four-part series that we had rave reviews on. And um, if you missed it, all you have to do is type replay. And we talked about Million Dollar Marketing Mastery. What are the four types of things that you need to do to turn your marketing into a million dollar business without you struggling and trying to figure out how to write it all, do it all, and but you still want to have it all. So if you want that series, it's a four part series that we did for an entire month with a lot of giveaways and things. Just write um, replay, hashtag replay, and we'll follow up with you. I also have Angie, um, our community manager here, helping us um, give you all of the giveaways, all the treats and things that you need. But I want to get going and, and move along really quickly. So um, a lot of times, um, first of all, I just want to welcome you all, say hello, hello, hello. Um, but I do know as we're getting going, a lot of times, oh, I'm going to say things that are too fast or doesn't make sense or you're not sure if it applies to you or you want more in-depth stuff because I can only go here for about a half an hour. And if you want some of that, all I, all I suggest is typing in the comments, hashtag call, okay? Just do hashtag call down below and we will um, get on a call. 10 minutes, figure out what you need. Um, we all are focused on speed here. So it doesn't take more than 10 minutes to figure out what your issue is and how to solve it. And if you need more time, we'll give you another, up to another hour of time. But we believe that most issues can be solved in about 10 minutes, right? So if you would like that, um, I want to make sure that you just go to callconnie.com or hashtag call down below. 
And when you book your call with me, um, you will get this. It's uh, since we're talking about stories, um, I want you guys to have this. This is 342 powerful headlines that sell. 342 powerful headlines that sell. Just book your call. You can go by yourself and do it on our calendar, callconnie.com, call or just write hashtag call. Um, down below and we will um, set a time that works good for you. All right. It's 10 minutes. No big deal. Say hi. Um, even if you just want to say hello, um, we'll be happy to give you the 342 headlines just to let us know a little bit about you, what you're looking for and how we can help you. Everything that we are here for and to do is to get you scaled up in your business and you're going to need different things. We have over 200 resources that we give out um, to our members here in the group for absolutely nothing for free. And um, so if you need some resources to get you to the next level, uh, consider me your online mentor and I'll take you there. Okay. So um, I do want to um, go ahead. And again, if this is your first time, um, put number one. Um, and if you're a pro, put number, um, actually, actually just write the word pro so I can see who my pros are. Um, and um, yeah, Faye says, yep, 10 minutes. That's all it takes, right? Of course, we could talk for hours, but 10 minutes is all you need. If you do um, want to be like Ruth and get the headlines, just type hashtag um, call or hashtag 342, whatever is easy for you. Uh, Ruth is a pro here. Emily's a pro here. Um, Faye has been here before. She's a pro. You guys are awesome. Um, so let's go ahead and get started, all right? Are you guys excited? Um, how many of you? Okay, give me a yes or no. How many of you have um, a good arsenal of stories that you tell? Do you have a whole bunch of different stories or do you, um, you just kind of talk the facts, the features and the benefits about what you do? Tell me if you are a story person or facts and features person. Let me know uh, what kind of person you are. Stories or facts and features? I wanna see who you are and then we're just gonna uh, go ahead and dive. All right, let's get going with Iconic TV. So here's the fact, right? Everybody, everybody has a story, right? We all have a story. What's your story? And what we want to do is not make you a one hit wonder in your business, right? Um, do you have a story that you just played again and again and again and again? It just goes round and round. It's the same old thing, same old story. You've been telling it for years. In fact, you're tired of it. Well, if you're tired of it, it could be likely that your audience is tired of it too. And you know how it all starts, okay? How do we get the story started? Oh, it all started so early. Back when I was a kid, you know, it was all in high school or it was somewhere, right? Stories usually start with a timeline. The problem with the stories though is this, that it goes on and on and on and on. <laughs> Have you ever met somebody like that? You ask them a simple question and their story goes on and on and on and on. Yeah. Give me some love if that's if you've been in that situation. Right. Um, I get it. I totally get it. OK, so here's the question that we have to ask ourselves before we get started on talking about the seven stories that will make you money. And that is what's the difference maker? What is the difference maker in a story. You guys have seen it. How many of you have seen, um, give me a thumbs up if you've seen this um, or a heart if you've seen this, that um, people are always saying, here, take my script. Here's our sales script. Here's our story script. Here's our webinar script, right? Have you guys seen that? Maybe you even bought some of those. Maybe you downloaded some of those, right? And so everybody has the same script. But why is it? that they're not getting the same results. And this is really the question that you got to ask. What's the difference maker? Hmm. Is it the story or is it the storyteller? Put your answer down below. What do you think it is? Why is it if everybody's downloading the same scripts, everybody has the same scripts, why is it that some people get results and some people don't? Is it the story? Is it the storyteller? What do you think the difference is? Well, obviously, it's not the story. It's the storyteller, right? And it's that conviction that you have with the story that you're telling that is going to make all the difference on whether you make a lot of money or whether you make nothing, right? You see, when you're looking at talking to people, it's it's what you're doing is you're trying to convey a story and, and convince them, right? There's one story, and that story has maybe two people listening. One's going to be the convincer, and one's going to be the convinced. One is the buyer and one is the seller. 
something gets sold, the question is, who's going to be the one that's doing the selling, right? And so let's talk about uh, really quick, because I have a, a, a really cool gift for you guys. Just hang on for about 10 minutes. And I've got a super cool gift to give to all of you. You guys can check it out. Um, because how do you stand out? How do you stand apart? How are you different? Okay, so let's take a look at these different ways. The first thing that you have to do, um, and the kind of story you've got to do is something that connects, right? The kind of stories you want to talk about are stories that will connect the known to the unknown right? These are the most powerful ways that you can do it. Um, and think of like analogies, right? How do you connect something that they know to something that they don't know, which is what you're trying to get them to buy, right? And this is one of the most powerful ways to get people's attention when you're talking in stories. How many of you do this? If you've uh, worked with me, you know, we're always using um, props and tools and things. And we're connecting the known to the unknown. Like, oh, I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, I get it. Now it relates to me, right? Because people's number one objective is how does this relate to me? They don't care about you. So when you're connecting something unknown to something known and go, oh, yeah, I get it. OK, so you need stories around that. And there's two goals. OK, the other thing you need to know is there's two goals with your stories and your stories have to have this. You have to have something up front that is going to make them listen. What makes them listen to you? So they will listen, but that's only the first goal. It's not going to take you all the way. The second goal is how are they going to remember that? Your stories have to have a way for them to remember it. And it can be in the telling, it can be in the description. It's, are you putting them in the scene? Are you giving them what? What are you doing? Um, how can they relate to it? So um, those right there are two um, more powerful things. You've got to get them to listen. You've got to get them to remember. Okay. So now you've got three things. I want to let you guys know that this is coming up. Just, you can write it down. I'll show you this again at the end. Um, but the most powerful thing is to have an arsenal of stories, right? You think about sitting around the campfire, right? And who's the most interesting person around the campfire? The one who has the most stories. And was like, oh yeah, tell me another one. Tell me another one. Who can you think of? Who do you know? Put in the comments. Who's the greatest storyteller you guys know? Who is it? Who do you think it is? Think of some people um, on on television. Um, you could think of authors. Um, J.K. Rowling is a great storyteller. Um, uh, I love um, uh, Joel Osteen. I think he's a great storyteller. Um, like you can have a variety, right? Dr. Seuss is a great storyteller right? He gets your attention and you remember it. How many of you know this fish, this story, or my favorite Dr. Seuss book was One Fish, Two Fish, Red Fish, Blue Fish, right? My gosh, that's decades ago and they still remember it, right? This is a story book, right? That's my Bible, okay? What's this full of? Story after story after story, right? For thousands of years, the stories are passed on. So somewhere in between this category and this category, you can be a great storyteller. It doesn't have to be all the same, but both of them are very memorable. And so think about the stories you're telling. Are they stories that people are going to remember? And do they remember you by them? Maybe sometimes people remember stories about you, not stories that you tell, okay? Um, and I'm gonna talk about that in a minute. So to have an arsenal of stories that you could always pull from is super powerful because you're going to meet different kinds of people and so you want to have different stories that each person can relate to depending on where they are in the whole timeline of of what you want to convey so we have something called the story bank where we have a number of stories and you can actually get this this is all about helping you get more clients saving you more time so you don't have to come up with the stories we have them all done for you and to help you earn more money because if people can relate to you and they're uh, mesmerized by your stories they're probably going to want to associate with you more so if getting more clients saving more time and earning more money is a big deal for you 
um, when we're done, go to um, www, you got to have the W's in there, um, ceostorybank.com, okay? And you can check it out. I'll show you a little bit more detail in a minute. But that is so cool because stories are not easy to write. Um, my second book took me a couple years to write. Um, how many of you have been, are authors? Any uh, Anyone an author? Type author down below in the comments if you're an author. You know it's not easy writing a book. Um, we teach it in 13 weeks, but it doesn't happen you know, um, without some effort. And if you're not the kind of person who's a good writer, good storyteller yet, well, go to CEO Story Bank and we will um, empower you with a whole bunch of stories that are already done for you. And you can just borrow those, okay? Of course, you got to add a little bit of your own flair um, when you say it. So you, it's all about the storyteller, um, not just the story, right? So what's the other part of these seven things that you need to know? It's the triggers. This is important. Um, the brain works as a visual machine. And in order to capture people's attention, you must make your stories visual. If they're not visual, your brain doesn't work off of logic, okay? It works off of initial visuals. And if you don't give them a visual with a story, then they're not going to remember you, right? The other trigger is emotional. Right. And these two tie together a lot. So how can you make your story emotional? How can you capture their heart while you're talking about the story? If you were just trying to tap into their logic, well, guess what? You are only reaching 20 percent of them. But if you tap into the heart um, and you make a visual story, then you've got 80 percent of the people's attention. So those two are very, very important. Again, now that's five different ways that you've uh, out of seven that you know how to tell the stories. OK, here's a little uh, trivia. Have you guys ever started to tell a story? Maybe you've been live on camera or you're talking on a speech and all of a sudden you totally forgot. Like, Oh, God, what was I saying? Do you guys remember where I was? Where where did I do that? Has that anybody has anybody ever had that? You know, just a, a moment of uh oh, where am I? And you're like, what was the point of that? OK. <laughs> First of all, you're probably not entertaining yourself. You totally forgot it. But does anybody know, trivia, just to help you out going forward, does anyone know when that happens, you draw a complete blank, do you know how to get the idea back like that? Any idea? Let me put some ideas in the comments. How do you think you get back on track when you completely lost your way? Um, all right. We, oh, I see we got some authors in the house. I love it. Um, yeah, if you want the story bank. Um, this is it, www.ceostorybank.com. You'll see a message from Angie and she'll help you out um, and get that if you have any problems at all with it. Um, and you can have that as soon as we're done, guys. So don't worry about that. So what is it? What do you think um, can, how do you do it? How do you get back on track when you totally lose your space or lose your place? Okay. And like, oh, what was they saying? Anyone know? How do you, how do you um, redeem it? Super simple. You laugh. OK, just start laughing. You don't even have to think of something funny. You can just start laughing and it will come back. That's how the brain works. OK, just thought I'd give you a little trivia um, if you're thinking about that, because we're stories, everything, video is everything right now. And you have to be able to catch yourself all the time. OK, so um, now, again, if you do want um, want some help. Uh, you need some help with stories. You need some help with your business. I can't figure out how to sell my offer. And um, I don't even know how to have a high ticket offer. How do I sell a high ticket offer? That's our specialty. Um, and the reason um, few people can do high ticket offers is because they can't sell. They can't story sell, right? And so if you do need some help, just go to callconnie.com or hashtag um, call and then you will get your free gift. 342 headlines that sell it's totally hair raising it's awesome and you don't have to worry about hiring a copywriter right because your story always needs a headline it needs an opener it needs something like that and these are all pre-written um, templates fill in and boom and for any kind of uh, business any kind of topic if you want that um, just do callconnie.com or hashtag um, hashtag 342 or hashtag call and we will get you all set up and those are really great i've used those for years um they're still current relevant to this day um, and it's the most popular thing that we have as far as one of the tools that people love to get okay so here's the thing when you're telling these stories right 
um, there's something that's also very vital. And this is it. The seventh thing that you need to know is follow your parents advice. You know what that is? This is probably the most important. And you're going to you guys might find this very controversial, okay? The most vital thing when you're trying to get those seven stories out is you must tell the truth. Tell truthful stories, okay? Does that mean you can't um, make up a fable or a thing like that? No, but here's the thing. The body, um, there's a great book called The Body Keeps the Score, right? Um, and if you know kinesiology and we study applied kinesiology and all of that, and it's a determinant of truth from falsehood, your body actually goes stronger when you are told something true. When you're told a lie, your body goes weak, okay? And when you're weak, you can't make decisions, you can't move forward, you don't trust. And so if your stories are made up and they're false and you're trying to act like they're real, it's not going to work. People are going to be turned off and they won't know why. They're like, I don't, I don't want to move forward. I don't even know why. And you're like, well, wh why doesn't this make sense to you? And they're like, I don't know. It's because your stories aren't true. And th the truth is so powerful. It doesn't even have to be the best story. What you put a false story next to a true story, people are going to um, gravitate towards the truth anytime. Okay. So please, please, please keep that in mind. That is vital. Remember what your parents said, right? As long as you tell me the truth, right? It's not going to be so bad. So make sure you're not embellishing and telling false stories. Where do we see this all the time when people embellish their income, right? Or they embellish their success. And, and sometimes people even make their um, sad, dark, I started, you know, from the ground, you know, I was homeless. Sometimes they even exaggerate those stories. And you, you guys can just feel it, but you might not even know why something doesn't resonate. So please, 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 of those seven things, that's one of the most important things is to make sure your stories are truthful. That doesn't mean you can't tell a story. I heard the story about somebody, okay? Um, there was a story, you know, or you're kind of telling a joke or something like that, you know, and then people go, oh, it's a, that's a joke. It's not a story, okay? Now, um, what kind of things do you need to understand? There's a, some ground rules with your stories, okay? And the four C's. I want to talk about the four C's. And these are universal four C's. We use this throughout all of our um, business and we teach it all the time because this is a foundation of any story, whether it's a story that you're talking to somebody live, you're doing a live on camera, maybe you're um, from the stage, you're trying to connect with people, just um, small talk, going to a party or something like that. The four C's will always help you with those conversations and those stories. So let's go over those. So you see, and then I will tell you the three things that you should never, ever, ever do stories on, okay? So the four C's um, the, is kind of the guideline, okay? So this will help you. Like, what kind of story should I use? How do I start? Okay. Comedy is a great one. If you can have humor in your stories, very, very powerful. If your stories can be complimentary to the person you're working with, like, you know what? You remind me of this person I used to work with. And she was so brilliant. And she did this and this and this. That's very complimentary to somebody, right? And that makes them listen and it makes them remember. And they're, they're, uh, everybody loves a compliment. I think the whole world doesn't get enough of them. Confusion. Like if there's a way you're like, huh, I wonder um, what's going to happen. Like, oh, where's this going to go? Um, confusion often comes in if you've ever heard of an open loop, okay? Um, so there's some, um, like you start to tell a story and then you go on another another. Um, tangent and then you come back and they're like confused wait wait i gotta have, have the ending of that so there's that confusion that curiosity to it and then courage courage stories are great right who doesn't love a come from behind story where you somebody is the hero and they went through all of this um effort and finally you know they win that's the whole um joseph campbell hero story and that whole track you see it in, in everybody's sales pitch who's the one of the best ones at this is russell brunson right when he um talks about his epiphany bridge and all of that okay so that kind of courageous storytelling very powerful so you want to have that included so those four c's right um was to complement comedy um confusion and courage those four are very powerful as kind of a theme that you want to have in your stories so what about the stories that you do not 
want to tell? What are the stories that are not going to make you any money? Any ideas? Is this making sense to you guys so far? Okay, give me a thumbs up. If this helps, are you going to use some of these stories? Let me know. Um, or if you want help, um, please just let me know and we can do a quick 10 minute fix. Okay, so um, a 10 minute fix is just we'll hop on a call um, for 10 minutes. And for that time within 10 minutes, we will go ahead and give you um, a gift for your time as well. So we'll help you with what you need help with. And then we'll give you those 342 headlines when you do have that call with me. Okay. So, um, but now what do you not do, right? Because it's all great when you know what to do, but isn't it nice when someone says, yeah, don't open that door, don't go down that road, okay? You know, I wish you would have told me that up front. So I don't want you guys falling flat on your face. So let's go ahead and talk about the things that you don't want to do, okay? So um, the other stories and people like um, uh, kind of uh, mystery stories and all that, um, but if you're gonna go into all the drama and stuff, make sure it's true, okay? Um, too much detail is not good, okay? And so you don't just want it fact story, okay? Put some drama in there, okay? But don't go too far overboard with the drama and don't be so boring like you're reading a police report, okay? That's one of the big problems. The other big problem, is this feature, 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 feature. And where does this come from? This is gonna put people to sleep, okay? People are gonna absolutely fall asleep if all you do is talk about features. Think about selling your offer. Like, oh, and then you show up here and we give you PDFs and, and then you get um, you get um, a membership and you get this and you're just talking about stuff. It's just stuff. Nobody cares about stuff. They care about what does this do for me? Tell me a story of how it's going to change my life. Make it a picture story, but don't just go feature, 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 feature. You're going to put your whole audience to sleep. All right. So um, make sure it's true. Um, not too much drama and don't let it read like a police report. Don't have feature, feature, feature. I know in the beginning, remember the old eighties and all the old salespeople, even a lot of them today tell you, oh, you know, you just do um, features and advantages and benefits. And that's what you talk about. No, it's boring, right? The market today is too sophisticated to go for that um, old stuff. All right. And then, um, um, Here's the, I'm going to talk to, because we talked about truth and lies, right? Don't go in the red. Don't start telling lies, okay? Um, part of that is this. Don't gossip. Gossipy stories will not make you money. Don't make stories about other people, okay? Guess what? It will come back at you. So limit that. Don't start talking about other people. But what, and and that goes along with the lie detector, right? Do you guys know how to detect a true story from a false one? Do you guys know? And and people will do this to you when they know the truth and you start going and doing this. This is this is the tell, right? You want to hear? How do you know? And it does actually come um, from the, um, you know, from like FBI, um, interrogations, all that kind of stuff. You know how somebody lies is they over detail. Have you heard of this? Like, like think of this, like um, uh, a, um, a criminal is pulled in to the police station and they sit him at the cold table, you know, the mirror in the background, everybody's watching from behind as if he doesn't know. And then he's being interrogated and like, tell me, I need your alibi. Where were you at 11 PM that night? And they go, oh, well, I know because um, that night was the anniversary of um, getting our dog. And so that morning I was thinking about this and they started taking me through every detail of the day up until 11 o'clock at night. And then I went to work. I remember um, Susie was really upset because, you know, um, there was a fire at her house. And so, you know, I consoled her. We went out for drinks afterwards. And um, when I drove home, I was um, I was noticing that the uh, street lights weren't as bright as they used to be. And um, so the, it's ridiculous. Right. Think about your kids, not you, of course, but maybe if you have kids and you know when they're lying, but you want them to tell the truth. And you're like, where, where were you? Did you break that thing or were you at Johnny's or did you skip school or whatever? Like, No, I did this and I did this and I did this and I did this. And they give so many details because they figure if they give you so many accountings 
that you will think, oh, nobody could make that up, all that detail. Watch it. You'll watch um, TV and you'll see it the same way. That's how you know people are lying. They're over detailing. They're trying to um, make, convince you of something. Now think of the reverse, okay? When you're trying to sell your offer, are you doing that? Are you over detailing and telling every little detail? People will get skeptical. They're like, huh, I don't know. Why are you trying so hard, right? So that's how you know. That's that truth meter. That's how you can detect truth from falsehood. It happened to us. Um, it was so funny. Just the other day, um, I had um, someone who wasn't honest and um, actually just did not show up um, for, um, an, you know, for work, basically. And I said, well, what happened? And I looked at my watch. It was four minutes, four minutes of me listening to the entire story of the day before we ever got, you know, to 4 p.m. So it's like, what happened? Why didn't you show up? It could have been a simple, oh, something came up. Um, but no, it was like, well, first of all, when I woke up, okay, I'm like, oh my God, how long do I have to listen to this? So it's funny. Now you guys want, I want you to pay attention. Think about this when you're asking people stuff and they're embellishing and they're going on and on and on and on and putting all this detail in. Um, and then remember yourself. When are you putting too much detail in? Um, you don't need it. Okay, you just need some good, compelling stories, right? Um, that you can connect, you can keep them visual, you can keep them remembering, you can put them in the scene, but you don't need to this timeline of everything that happened minute by minute. It will bore your people and they will think something's up. Okay, um, is this helping you guys? Can you think of some people maybe when they might have lied, like, where were you? What were you doing? And they just, oh, I just did that, right? Because why? The truth needs no defending. OK, if you're delivering something amazing as truthful and just say, yeah, this is it. Uh, we have lots of people that do it. And the question is, do you want to come in? Right. Um, well, do you want to go from six figures to seven figures? Well, yeah. OK, well, then let's get going. Uh, you know, we don't have to convince you and, and, and show you 97 million um, stories. Right. It's like this is how it works. Um, you follow four steps and um, don't don't not do them. Show up, make a million. Sound good? right? So we, if your stuff is good, truth doesn't need a lot of stuff behind it, okay? So, but um, stories are really fun, okay? And I do um, want you guys to, you know, make sure that you are telling good stories. Again, um, go ahead and um, go to callconnie.com, okay? Callconnie.com, or you can type down below, um, you can type hashtag call, okay? Just type hashtag call down below, and we will book a call with you. Um, we can ask you your stories. And um, there are three stories that everyone has to have, even before you get into all the meaty stories. There are three stories, okay? Um, and we teach these all the time with our um, with our workshops and things. And um, so you can always get those, but they're in here, okay? Because this is, um, this is um, what I was telling you guys earlier, the story bank. And we put together stories that sell. Um, I did this for a couple years. I lived in um, Siesta Key, Florida, if you guys know that's rated one of the top 10 beaches in the world, right? And all I did every day is um, come up with stories. Every day on the beach, I'd sit there on the beach every day and just have a story, write a story every single day. So story bag is like your personal vault. And it's all these market ready stories that are ready to go. Okay. And um, inside all the stories are done for you done with you or done by you so let me show you the stories that you really have to focus on that are really important i'll give you a bigger picture of this too okay so i told you there's seven kind of stories i talked about that right up front but there's more okay and so um there's actually 24 stories here and it's not just 24 single stories, it's 24 categories of stories. And each category is multiple stories inside, okay? So there's um, headlines, you gotta have the headlines. Um, you need stories to engage people. You need stories around your offer and your call to action. You need stories that persuade and inspire, um, starting with quotes, 
great quotes are wonderful. Um, you know, I, my, one of my favorite quotes is Soren Kierkegaard, to label me is to negate me. And then you can go on and tell a story about that. Um, snippets when you're doing chats and messaging. And wouldn't it be great to have little story things that you could have for all of the chatting and, and messaging and marketing that you're doing. When you tell a story about the reviews that you get from people and your own story, your own biography. OK, so those are what's included in the story bank, a bunch of stories under each of those categories. Right. And like I said, you can use it anywhere in your emails, posts, blogs, your lives, your events. Do it from the stage, wherever you want to do it. So those are the nine stories, story categories that you have to know. You have to have stories around that. OK, um, as as the owner and CEO. Um, and there's more. OK, so there's 13 more stories that help. Right. Um, uh, for your discussions, talking about your imperfections, the things that didn't go right, um, stories with teams, humor stories, community stories that you tell in your communities and about communities. Culture is huge. Your um, Any kind of cautions that you have, analogies. Analogies are super powerful. Um, productivity stories that you can talk about, adversity that you come across, um, stories that you tell over celebrations, the hero's journey. Do you have your own hero's journey story? Does this make sense? So all of these are different kinds of stories that you have to have in your arsenal when you're going. And then your own brainstorm stories, right? What are you coming up with and you run across something? Where do you log that? So this is actually housed um, all in a Trello board. So you can add to it. You, um, you get all of ours. They're all done. Um, and then you can, you know, use it and add to yours and use ours. Because here's the problem. Most business owners are product sellers. They're not great storytellers, right? Most people just can sell their product, but they don't tell a story around it. And so you want um, to transform your business with the stories that you sell. So if, do you want it? Like, who wants a story bank? If you want the story bank, here's all you have to do is you just go to CEOstorybank.com. OK, CEO storybank.com and we will get that for you. Um, and again, if you want to book a call with us, um, feel free. We can help you out. We can um, also get you the 342 headlines that go with it. OK, so that was the seven ways that you can use stories um, to make yourself more money, how to use them. The three ways that you should not be telling stories and then a resource, a tool that you can get and have all of your stories done and then continue to add to them um, every time you get a new story. So there's 24 different categories of stories. If you were trying to do that on your own, it would be a lot, right? It would take a lot of time to build that up. So our whole arsenal of stories is already done for you. Um, and also, it, it is a whole um, bank where you can continue to add more of your own story. So that's what we want you guys to have today. Come back next week because at two, um, Tuesday, 5 p.m. every week we are here. If you missed some of this, then please make sure that um, you get a replay and just type hashtag replay down below and we will get you a replay so that you can watch this again. So hashtag replay if you wanna see this again. If you would like the story bank, I'll show you a little bit how that goes. And I wanna thank you guys for being here and we will see you next week. All right, have a great day.